action that they do at the professional level. Absolutely. North Broward has, well, I'll calculate it out right now. They have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 17 players on their squad, unlike the 25 in the majors. And not all of those 17 can pitch. If I had to take a guess without actually calculating, I'd say there's probably five or six pitchers on this squad at least. I'd say that the four main ones, Kennard, uh, Houston, Paye, O'Brien. And Snyder. And Snyder. So, so five. five. With Jared Hellman, if he can get healthy. Outside one and one. So currently North Broward had only five pitchers, and they've used three of them so far. Have to be very careful with those pitch counts. Inside two and one. And uh, Houston's having a bit of trouble finding the strike zone as it is. Tough to do there. Manager Brian Campbell is going to go out to the mound. Looks like he thinks Paye is ready. Find some music to throw on real quick. And he is going to make and a change. And that's the night for Houston. Respectable effort. We'll be right back with the new pitcher right after this. Don't go anywhere. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. The pitcher is number eight, Christian Paye. Been a reliable figure on the mound. We were just talking about him. Why don't you tell us a little bit about him, Ben? Well, he's pitched 14 and a third innings, eight earned runs, 10 runs total, eight hits, four Ks, four box, and two hit by pitches. Seems to be some sort of debate between the umpires. Paye was... They brought the pitcher in mid-count. That's causing some confusion. I don't believe I did anything wrong. No, I don't think you did. Anyway, Paye was in last game. It is one and I believe he just signaled it was one and one. The 
It's a little confusing. Well, that one's low. Now it's three and one. It is three and one. I was right the whole time. You were right and you the people doubted time. me. Christian Pay was in last game. Two thirds of an inning, two earned runs, no hits, one walk, one hit by pitch. Walks this better. Now that'll bring up Siddle Longo. Now who does the walk go to on the scoreboard since he only threw two pitches? That's an excellent question, Sam. I don't know. And it wasn't as if, even as though one threw the majority of the balls. I would have to imagine it goes to Paye. It's an interesting. If you happen to know the. If you happen to know the answer to this scorer's dilemma, please tweet us at Stuck in Sam's Head or at Ben Curtis MVP. I will also deploy our finest researchers to the case. So ourselves? Yes. Ben Curtis furiously Googling. Something that you do not do for the trivia questions, but is perfectly okay to do here. Paye fires just outside two and one. So the bases are loaded, by the way, with one out and a 2-1 count. Paye is going to have to work to get him out of this one. Here's a pitch. Finds a strike zone, 2-2. Two and two. Best case scenario for North Broward right now, they have the force out on all bases. A double play ball is feasible. Here it comes. And that's a chopper to third base. Goes home, gets, gets the out, he takes, takes out, out the catcher. And Clyde already had a bit of trouble while running to first base in the bottom of the previous inning. The slide, the slide was a chop block, block straight, straight to the right, right knee of Logan Clyde. He's up and he's walking about. He's certainly taken a beating, but he saved the run for North Broward. Good composure by North Broward all the way through Goberville on staying with that choppy baseball, and then Clyde on making the catch. It was Aquero's walk, I believe, that signaled the issues for Houston last inning. And now the lefty with the Cespedes arm sleeve is back up to bat. I have a ruling on the scores thing, but we will deal oh, with it in the bottom thought. of the That inning. one is high and deep to left field, under it, and he makes a catch. Run's not going to score. We're still tied up at five as we go into the bottom of the ten. It's time for a walk-off, we hope. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As the crowd says, only takes one swing to decide the outcome of this game. Raul Kennard knows this. He's going to have to make sure he doesn't crack under pressure. Well, we had a bit of a question in the top of the inning when Christian Paillet came in with two balls and then walked the batter, who the walk is attributed to. 
Well, if we're playing by Major League rules, I looked up Rule 10.16H as a swing and a miss for strike one. Rule 10.16H stipulates that when a pitcher comes in with two or more balls already into the count, the walk is attributed to the pre to the preceding pitcher. So in that case, Houston would get credit for the walk. Swing and a miss from Kennard, 0-2. Interesting, it seems that Paye is going to be up to bat next. He's taking the DH spot from Blake Houston. Don't see him bat much. Only 167 on the air. I believe he's one for six. So looks at the ball, one and two. Kennard one for three so far with a hit in that third inning, which has propelled North Broward so far tonight. But back to what we were saying, yeah, very interesting rule. Only with two balls. I think it's a fair rule. I think so as well. Great furious Googling by Ben Curtis. Thank you very much. The thumb's hard at work. Hits that one on the line to third base. Throws it over to first. And that's going to be an easy out. One down. Here comes Paye. <laughs> So as you said, Paye batting 167, one RBI on the year. Not a frequent hitter. Good to see Brian Campbell bringing Paye up, though. That means that should we head to a ninth, Paye will be back out on the bump. Fouls back into the backstop. And, and I have to imagine that Paye will go the rest of the way. I don't really know who else would pitch for North Broward. I can't imagine Kennard would. I wouldn't imagine. I want to save him. I'm always available off the bench. Pops that one up to the third baseman and makes the easy catch, bringing up Snyder. No credit. We are unaware of the rules in regards to extra innings in this sort of scenario. I believe that the decision to either go more extra innings or declare it a tie is up to the discretion of both managers and the umpire. Keep in mind, folks, that this is an out-of-district game. Big swing and a miss from Snyder. He knows what's riding on this. Snyder, one for three so far. As we like to say a lot, you don't want to swing for the fences in these scenarios. Just try to make solid contact, get a base hit, start something. Especially with the top of the order coming up. One and one now. Yeah, you just want to find, you want to start some momentum. And the bats have fallen relatively quiet for Norris Broward. after that third inning. Lots of O's on the scoreboard. Yes. Makes good contact, that is deep into left field. And it's fair. Snyder has himself a single. And now that's gonna bring up Marsh. Marsh. Well, this is where Ty Marsh really has to so show some discipline. Your imagination can start to wander here. He's just got to make sure he puts a good swing on a baseball. Marsh, one of three seniors on this North Broward squad. Do you think that that'll bring some sort of maturity to this? Well, I think he knows what he has to do, and I think he has that discipline uh, compared to some of the sophomores on this team. Over the catcher's head. The backstop coming into play. He's going to go to third. It gets past the cutoff man. He holds up, and now Ty Marsh has a runner on third with two outs in the bottom of the eight. Things are heating up. Well, that totally changes the complexion of this at-bat from Marsh. Previously, an extra base hit would have been needed in order to score Snyder. Now a base hit of any sort will, make, will do the job. Things certainly getting interesting here at the unnamed North Broward baseball field. If I had a cap, I'd put it on inside out right about now. And backwards, Sam. You got to get inside and out and backwards. Crossing your legs each which way. 
Waving the zombie voodoo. Someone's giving me a hat. Please no. I, 